When I first noticed the red dot award on the box of the XPG Alpha wireless gaming mouse, it made me wonder what the award is for. Is it for the design and shape of the mouse? or for this anime chick that is there on the box. Well, calm down people, this is only about the mouse. Hey everyone, Mukul here. So yeah, let's talk about the design and fit first as XPG got an award for it after all. This mouse has been designed for right-handed people. So the lefties have been left out. The form of the mouse will definitely remind you of mice like uh, the Logitech G402 or the Razer Basilisk series. So similar to those mice design, the thumb will rest on the platform underneath it. Hence making the mouse feel a bit more frictionless as compared to a mouse where the thumb also rubs off against the surface of a mouse pad. These bumps to the thumb feel a bit too rough for my liking, but they have not troubled me that much. Because of all the sharper life experiences I've had so far. The buttons over the thumb area have a good distance from where the thumb rests, so there were no accidental hits on them by my lazy ass thumb. The left click area of the mouse is a bit raised as compared to the right click area, so it was pretty darn easy for my hand to adapt to the shape of the mouse. The bump under the palm area also seems to have just the right amount of height, so the hand feels quite well rested over it. Over the span of the last three weeks that I have been using the mouse, my hand and thence I have felt the superior comfort of the shape and design the mouse offers. For instance, now I can really feel the difference between this versus the Razer Death Adder Essential as how much more comfortable my hand rests on the shape of the XPG Alpha. There is so much asymmetricalness with the form of this mouse for the right hand that it makes it quite easy to understand and acceptable that why can't it have an MB dexterous design. The overall build of the mouse is pretty good and without the USB dongle inside, the mouse weighs around 100 grams. Yes, this might vary a lot of pro FPS players, but something about the design does make it feel lighter than it is. The mouse feet are PTFE and the part around the sensor has a small PTFE ring to it too. The switches used are by Omron and the sensor is the Pixar PAW3335. The sensor is supposed to deliver a good performance while it's consuming less power. And this sensor can also be tuned to two different lift-off distances uh, with the setting of 1mm or 2mm which is clearly mentioned in this Pixar document. But inside the XPG Prime software it actually showed me 2 or 3mm options. So to test this out, I stashed some playing cards onto each other in my not so scientific lab and these were my findings. At approximately 1.35mm lift off distance, both the 2mm and 3mm heights made the mouse runs perfectly fine. At 1.65mm, the sensor started lagging at 2mm but worked perfectly at 3mm. At 2mm, both the 2mm and 3mm lift off distances didn't really work. Although I am pretty sure that my not so scientific test methods and the feet of the mouse are playing a role in the variations here, but I am quite confident that the software's 2mm and 3mm lift off distances are not completely correct either. You can adjust the DPI up to 16000 and the mouse runs at 1000Hz polling rate. I reckon these are decent specs for the price of the mouse, which does feel a bit overpriced, but the design and the shape alone makes it kind of worth it. But I can't deny the fact that I would have loved it at a slightly lower pricing, but the mouse has two years of warranty, which does help its cause. The left and the right click need slightly lesser than average actuation force, and they sound quite tinny overall. I played a few death matches over the span of two weeks of Counter-Strike GO and had absolutely no troubles with it until I fixed this very weird experience I had with the mouse in the beginning. Even when its dongle was just placed three feet away and was installed in the front USB port on the PC case, the mouse started behaving quite finicky. It lagged and stuttered crazily after half an hour of usage. So this made me test it on a laptop and there I didn't face any such issue. I then tested it on another PC and again on the front USB port and the mouse behaved fine. So this was making me extremely curious about what the heck is wrong uh, with either my PC or with the mouse because if it didn't work with my PC in the end then the experience would have totally sucked. So I then tried the rear USB port of the dongle and that just killed the mouse. 
So then as a last resort, I took out the USB extension cable of my Logitech G304. Yeah, sadly the XPG Alpha doesn't come with one and hooked the wireless toggle to it and then placed it right in front of the mouse. And since then it has been working flawlessly. But it's kind of absurd to experience that the mouse simply failed to work at a distance of just three feet uh, from the front USB port and there were also no hindrances in between. So yeah, with this mouse, you have to respect its incapability of failing miserably at long distance relationships which weren't that long to be honest. When I tried to use the mouse in Bluetooth mode, I just couldn't figure out how to enable it. So like a good ideal boy, I tried looking in the manual and tried these steps. But I miserably failed as it said to press the DPI switch button and then switch to the Bluetooth mode. And this was kind of making me feel extremely dumb. What it should have said was to hold the DPI switch button and then switch to the Bluetooth mode. And this made the manual feel dumb and hence I felt smarter. And then only you will see the mouse appear on your Bluetooth compatible devices. Anyway, the Bluetooth mode makes the mouse feel like a 500 rupees Bluetooth mouse. So all the efforts to try this out went in vain. But I'm pretty sure this is going to be handy on devices where you can't really attach the dongle and use the 2.4 GHz connection. The mouse lasted me about 8 days when I used it extensively for 8 to 9 hours every day. So that's a pretty decent battery backup. And charging the mouse completely takes 2.5 hours easily. You can use the mouse with the provided USB-C charging cable when the battery dies. But the cable is so terrible that even as a casual gamer, I hated using the mouse with it. Including even for the typical task I do on my system. The cable is pretty long though. There are these hooks to the sides of the USB-C port so that the cable stays locked in it even when you try to go aggressive with it. This also means you won't be able to connect any other cable to the mouse. The RGB elements are pretty nice and bright and they do give a nice touch to the overall aesthetics of the mouse. I really like them illuminating under the buttons. This kind of gives a feeling that the mouse is breathing. Although I'm pretty sure turning them off would make the battery last longer, but then you don't want to lose the extra FPS they give through the sensor under the mouse. The light also breathes nicely on the DPI shift button when it's being charged and will show a green light when it's fully charged. To get the software for the mouse, just google the word XPG Prime as going on to the product page first and then trying to find a link in the download section wouldn't actually lead you there. Kind of weird but I guess that's how XPG rolls. I love the fact that you can simply log in as a guest into the app and don't need to make an XPG account. And the app is so detailed that it kind of blew my mind. Of course you can customize the way the lighting behaves on the mouse. You can also customize the function for any of the buttons on the mouse. And because I like to set my DPI fixed at 800, I changed the DPI shift button to play and pause media, which has turned out to be a blessing for me. You can also adjust angle snapping that can predict and smooth your mouse movements if you need some sort of computational help in daily usage or in gaming. Computational help. Isn't everything computational about computers? Well, I could be pretty good at marketing. And you can also adjust the debounce time of every click from 0ms to 24ms, but I'm pretty sure these values aren't exactly 100% correct. In my style of casual gaming, I did not feel any difference between either of these values. But I'm pretty sure the ultra competitive gamers might just feel a slight difference that my new brain and my hands can't feel. You can also set at word percentage the mouse should alert you about low battery and the software just recently got an update and now shows the real time battery status. Although this has some bugs as it still sometimes shows that the mouse is being charged even when it's not. Even after all that there are more features like you can set the macros and then there are a bunch of profiles that you can save here which will also be stored inside the onboard memory of the mouse. So in case you decide to remove the software later from your PC, you can. So I definitely love how the mouse fits inside my hand and how effortless it generally felt for work and gaming collectively. This whole experience made me pretty sure uh, that the Red Dot Design Award was quite justified as now my dear right hand can't stand the shape of the Razer Death Adder Essential which felt comfortable earlier. And the mouse has so many frigging features that the little tiny flaws I mentioned throughout this review are quite acceptable in my personal opinion and I am confident that XPG will keep pushing software updates to improve upon this. So if you like my efforts on the video then you can buy from the affiliate links which I will post below. I hope there are some affiliate links on Amazon for the same mouse. So take care humans, Alpha MuBot out wirelessly. <laughs>